There's a great paradox of celebrating Srila Prabhupada's disappearance day. The great paradox of Srila Prabhupada is present with us and also not present with us. As Dhamma Maharaj is pointing out, there is a difference. There's definitely a difference. It's, you can't there's the, the philosophy of well, it's not really a philosophy, but the idea of Ritvikism is that Prabhupada is your guru, but then you Tadviti Pranipate, no? well, you can bow down before Prabhupada's in the deity form. And Pariprashna, but it doesn't work. Yeah, it's, you can say you get the answers from the Prabhupada's books, but the, the point is you have to hear from a, you have to hear personally from a guru. Otherwise, if you think, well, I'm just connecting with the parampara, I'll sit in front of Prabhupada and deity and whatever comes in my mind. Well, it may just be your mental speculation. I, uh, one person was writing to me and asking what, what they thought they should do. And I wrote back and I suggested that they, dis- they dedicate themselves to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books. So that person didn't like that instruction. So she wrote back, I was so upset I sat in front of Prabhupada and asked Prabhupada, what should I do? And he told me to kick him in, name him, namely myself, kick him in the face. But I don't think Prabhupada would ever instruct, if, it, if anyone instructed anyone else to distribute Prabhupada's books, I, it's not consistent with anything we saw or heard of Prabhupada that he would be upset with that. He might not... He, he might not agree with it. He might say, well, this devotee has to do something else. Although generally he was very enthusiastic in distributing his books. But that's an example of, of how we have to personally hear. We can hear from Srila Prabhupada. We must hear from Srila Prabhupada by reading his books, hearing his lectures. But he has also disappeared, just like Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur has disappeared. Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj has disappeared. They're present in their legacy. He reasons in ill while he reasons ill who tells that Vaishnavas die when thou art living still in sound. A Vaishnav dies to live and living tries to spread the holy name around. He lives in his Bani, in his instruction. But not in the not in the same way as previously. But he continues to live in as much as his instructions are followed. And as Srila Prabhupada noted about his own Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarataka, he in his uh, dedication to this his translations of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Srila Prabhupada said, these are my devotional ecstasies. Often people expect with the sadhu that they'll do some chamatka. What's your, what's your, they measure the worth of a sadhu on his ability to create miracles. Or in the Vaishnav Sampradaya, especially among Gorya Vaishnavs, especially among Prakrita Sahajyas, in how much ecstasy one shows. So Srila Prabhupada, he was undoubtedly ecstatic in Krishna consciousness. But he made a point not to show that ecstasy. And sometimes when it bubbled up or and burst out, Srila Prabhupada would and Prabhupada would sometimes become stunned and then and then afterwards he might appear to be embarrassed about that or shy or express regret. 
There was an incident in Mayapur when Srila Prabhupada in a lecture became stunned in ecstasy. And then after, after some time, please turn all the cell phones off. After some time, you could build your temple if you have a hundred rupee fine for every time the cell phone goes off in the temple room. Anyway, Srila Prabhupada was stunned in ecstasy. And one devotee, Hansa Dutta, started to chant Hare Krishna. And, and the, the devotees all chanted, following him. And then Prabhupada came out of that ecstasy to external consciousness. Then afterwards, another devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, well, what should we do? Because there was some controversy over that. That one devotee, some devotees were saying, well, you shouldn't have disturbed Prabhupada in his ecstasy. Although others thought, well, yeah, well, that was, it's always good to chant Hare Krishna. So one devotee asked Prabhupada, what should we do in, in, on occasions when you go into an ecstatic trance? And Prabhupada said, apologetically, oh, that, well, I, I don't often do that. <laughs> so he was, he didn't like to show that. Maybe because the Prakrita Sahajiyas, they do like to show that. They, they make a, a business of, uh, or they, they specifically like to show how ecstatic they are. And the, among the Prakrita, or that, but it's not real ecstasy. And among the Prakrita Sahajiyas, they, uh, they rate someone. They have in their idea who, who is greater, who is lesser, according to their ability to show tears and swooning and leads to some unusual phenomena such as speakers on Sriman Bhagavatam just before they come out to do their show putting chili powder in their eyes that produces lots of tears. So Srila Prabhupada wrote about his own Guru Maharaj, dedicated, dedicating the Srimad Bhagavatam, dedicated to his divine grace, Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahamsa, Parivraja Karacharya, 108, Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Sasra Thakur, Goswami Prabhupada. He lives forever in his instruction and the follower lives with him. So he lives and those who follow, they live with it. So Prabhupada offered his Srimad Bhagavatam, that was his greatest life's work, that he considered, uh, Srila Prabhupada considered writing his books, his greatest service to his spiritual master. He's, he wrote in one letter, <coughs> that I may retire from traveling and preaching all over the world. I may retire from that, but I cannot retire from writing my books because that is my service to my spiritual master. And of all the books he considered, of all the books he presented, he considered the Srimad Bhagavatam the most important. And he stated that uh, my purports, they are my devotional ecstasy. So Srila Prabhupada's ecstasy, we, we hear of Prabhupada's ecstasy, he's dancing in Rathiatra, various Rathiatras. Dancing is, uh, that is uh, an exhibition of ecstasy, the spontaneous divans dancing of a pure devotee in Kirtan. That is uh, an exhibition of his ecstasy. By exhibition, I don't mean exhibitionism, but it is a manifestation of his ecstasy. That when he hears the kirtan, that he naturally the the, the feelings for Krishna they they swell up and automatically he wants to dance. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, that I don't dance by practice. It's not a Form. He doesn't think, now I have to dance, but automatically it takes place when I hear the holy name of Krishna. So we've heard about 
many, uh, or, or several times, especially when Srila Prabhupada was very uh, ecstatically dancing in Kirtan, and some of his, well, one of his disciples used to tell me that Prabhupada would sometimes, in his vision, uh, act like a, or act like a cowherd boy. And sometimes Prabhupada would say things like that. I just want to go to Golok Vrindavan and steal Krishna's lunchbox. Apparently Prabhupada had said that. So these are manifestations of his ecstasy, but as Bhano Maharaj was pointing out, Srila Prabhupada is very practical, and you could, you could say his practical ecstasy, although these two terms may seem contradictory. But his ecstasy was manifested not so much in shows of ecstasy, but in his desire to serve the mission of his Guru Maharaj by writing books. And Prabhupada said, these are my devotional ecstasies, because that is, in his books, there's glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead which is Kirtan. And Prabhupada was very ecstatic to uh, every night, mostly, almost every night, he would stay up when no one would have denied after working hard all day, no one would have denied him the comfort of, of uh, resting during the night. No one told Prabhupada that you have to get up at night, but automatically by himself, being so enthusiastic to glorify Krishna, he arose in the middle of the night and would dictate the glorification of Krishna. And that glorification of Krishna also took the form of a non-glorification, or vilification of everything which is not Krishna Krishna. There's two sides of glorification, positive and negative. To glorify Krishna, to glorify the process of devotional service, to glorify the devotees, and to vilify the non-devotees, to vilify the uh, attempts and activities, to vilify, to point out what is the usefulness. It's another form of, glori another way of glorifying devotional service is to vilify that which is not devotional service. As Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur pointed out, in Kali Yuga the negative process is more important than the positive process. And even in other Yugas, he said that Hiranyakashipu glorified Nrsimha Dev more than Prahlad Maharaj did. And Ravana glorified Ram more than Hanuman did. So that may take a little thinking to understand, about to understand but the point is that Srila Prabhupada was, uh, he was ecstatic, ecstatic devotee in serving Krishna. He was ecstatic. The last time I personally had the darshan of Srila Prabhupada was in Vrindavan in October of 1977, approximately one month before Srila Prabhupada departed this world, which is uh, 30 years to the day taken either by the Gregorian calendar or the Vaishnav calendar. It happens to be the 14th of November 1977. It happens to fall on the same day, 14th of November 2077. So it was approximately one month before that. And Srila Prabhupada sat up, or rather he was sat up by his disciples. He was too weak to sit up by himself. And he was going to take some prasada although he hadn't eaten for months before. And Prabhupada started saying Sharia Ravidya Jal, and then he started explaining how the senses of network, of paths leading to death, he started preaching to all the devotees about him, about controlling the senses in Krishna consciousness. And I thought that here Srila Prabhupada is he's still talking on these very basic subjects. Although you might think the great devotee of Krishna in Vrindavan. Don't think it was Kartik month. Maybe just before. This must have been before. Probably before Kartik began. 
but Srila Prabhupada found his ecstasy in preaching to the devotees what he understood they needed to hear. There was nothing. So it, it's not necessarily that someone who talks about gopi leelas is experiencing them or is able to help us experience them. And it's not necessarily that someone, Srila Prabhupada, was very cautious in discussing these topics. It doesn't necessarily mean that that he wasn't experiencing this or that he's not competent to help us experience it. But because he's actually experiencing it, therefore he knows uh, how to help us experience that. He knows what is required. So that may appear to be a paradox also. How Srila Prabhupada was undoubtedly the topmost devotee, but he was very cautious in revealing the topmost subjects. That is another uh, demonstration of his being on the topmost level, that he was able to come to persons on the lowest level and give them uh, experience or a, a window into the highest level of Krishna consciousness and practically guide them and train them to come up to that. We're supposed to be having... Are you waiting for me? Are you... Okay, so we should have the R.I.T. then. So, Ebe Josh Gusha Tribhuvan. Srila Prabhupada's glory should be spread all over the universe. We turn about Prabhupada's books. Now the December marathon is coming up, so it's a great opportunity to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books. That's always there, but especially in December, the bodies make more effort. So, Please do it, participate in this, and get the blessings of Srila Prabhupada by doing so. Hare Krishna.